Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I have one more song I wanted to play. I definitely wanted to get this little bit of praise and worship for filling in the Lord before I get into Guess I'll order something. this morning. Oh. Amen. Stronghold. Amen. Because God is real and God is good. Amen. Amen. Welcome, beloved. Welcome on this Friday morning. I welcome you. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you for watching this morning and joining me for an hour of unity. Again, I am Elder Paulette, and I come to you Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 a.m., so we made it to the end of the week. Um, just to give you a short word, just to share with you what God has placed on my heart, to encourage you to get through what we're all going through together, to get through this pandemic, to get through the shutdown, the postponements of things that we can't do, but also to keep our eye on God, to continue for us to be lifted up. So I pray that on this morning, as we go forth in prayer, that whatever God has for you on this morning that you receive, excuse me, as well as myself, I'm trying to receive what God has for me too. So we're just going to join together, of course, say a word of prayer, and then we're just going to dive in. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, reminding us that we are blessed in the city, Father, reminding us that we are blessed in you, Father, reminding us that we are victorious despite of what it looks like, despite of what we're going on, Father. We know that you are still sitting on the throne and you are still manifesting for us and working things out for us in our favor and our good. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus on this morning, open our hearts, open our ears, and open our mind to receive what you have for us on this morning, Father. Hide me behind the cross, Father, as I give your word, Father. Let someone be able to be touched this morning. Whatever issue or heaviness or burden they're going through, Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you lift it and you release that, Father, that they might not just chime in, but they also be able to feel your presence and be able to know that you are still there and working things out for them. Let them feel your joy, your anointing, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So good morning, everyone. This morning I wanted to touch on uh, Palm Sunday. As some of you might know, Palm Sunday is coming up this Sunday, actually, um, which is where we normally, you know, go to church and we fellowship together and we get the palms um, from our church, um, the nice big yellow palms and then sometimes like I do I make a cross and things of that nature so I thought it not robbery to talk about Palm Sunday but also to again to always give you just a little bit from a different perspective and a different lens um, since I come to you Monday Wednesday Friday of course I want to honor what Sunday is and what's coming up and the meaning behind what Palm Sunday means um, and then next week when I come to you on Monday is Holy Week amen Palm Sunday is the initiation of Holy Week, amen, and this is, that that is the beginning of the week of Jesus getting prepared, you know, for his crucifixion, um, but also his resurrection, amen. So, um, next week, of course, I'm going to start talking about the Holy Week on Monday, Wednesday, and a Good Friday, amen. But on this morning, I just wanted to touch a little bit about Palm Sunday. So, if you have your Bibles, if you're able to bring up your Bible app, um, or you're able to look online, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 21. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, and we'll be starting at verse 1. I'm going to Matthew chapter 21, verse uh, starting at verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. That's the kind of version that I usually like to read. And it's talking about Jesus' triumph entry into Jerusalem. Again, we're going to be focusing on Palm Sunday. I also have it written on the title. It says Matthew 21, and we're starting at verse 1. And it reads as follows. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Beth Bethlehem, now bless me, I pray I got that right, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey and tie it in a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what has been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foil of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. Verse 7. Good morning, Brother Jabari, good morning. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them that followed were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? Verse 11 reads, the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So we were coming again from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11 is what I just wrote read and we are talking about Palm Sunday and I want to give you of course some background of what Palm Sunday is if you're not sure or you're not familiar and then I want to go a little deeper again to challenge us to look into the meaning and the message of the significance of what Palm Sunday means as it's approaching us on this week so if you if you ever heard of Palm Sunday if you know anything but Palm Sunday is the commemorate I'm sorry commemorates the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem so this is the, the becoming of, of, you would say, Jesus coming out of into the people. Basically, people knowing that he was the Messiah, there was whispers about, yeah, he might be the chosen one, he might not be. People, he was still going around doing his message, he was still doing his healings, but people still kind of doubted, you know, who Jesus was. And Jesus was not a boastful man. He was not a man to be like, yep, this is who I am, y'all need to know, you know, I'm the king, or I am the, uh, that I am. He was very humble, he was very, very meek, very mild. Um, so this for him actually probably was coming out of his comfort zone that he had to fulfill the prophecy that was spoken that he would come into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday in order for those to see him riding towards what would be his, his last week with his people, what would be his last week with the disciples, which was his preparation, you know, for his crucifixion. So we read um, in Matthew chapter 21 and how this is God getting prepared. He told his disciples to go get, you know, the donkey to go get the cloth for to bring it to him and he would ride into Jerusalem. When he rode into Jerusalem, palm branches were placed at his path before his arrest of Holy Thursday and the crucifixion which was on Good Friday. Again, we'll talk about that next week in more detail. It thus marks the beginning of Holy Week and the final week of Lent. We also know Ash Wednesday, which was a month ago, um, we put the ashes on our head and we were basically referencing Lent season. And usually some people understand Lent, you give up something, you ain't eat, you're not eating meat or you're giving up Facebook or whatever you're giving up as a sacrifice and we have Fish Fridays. And again, it's just to honor the reverence of Jesus' story, the reverence of what he did for us, the sacrifice that he gave for us. So on Sunday, that's going to mark our beginning of Holy Week and that is becoming Palm Sunday. Now the palm branch is a symbol of victory. Um, this is what we give out in church. A lot of churches give these out, and this is what I do mine. I turn mine into a cross. I still have mine from last year in my car. Um, and I, I use it as a symbolicness and reverence to remind myself, you know, that I am a Christian, but I also believe in what Jesus did for me. So the palm branch is a symbol of victory and triumph and peace and eternal life originating in the ancient Near East of the Mediterranean world. The word Hosanna. Now, this is what they yelled to Jesus as he was coming into Jerusalem. I'm sure he wasn't sure what they were going to say. I'm sure he was just like, you know what? I'm not quite sure, you know, God talking to his father, what's going on or what's about to go down. But I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to follow you. So that they, these are the words they screamed to uh, Jesus as he was coming in on a donkey. They were saying Hosanna. Hosanna, son of David. Hosanna, blesses the one of the Lord. So Hosanna is a Hebrew word and the meaning of Hosanna means save now or save us, we pray. I want you, beloved, this morning to imagine being a man. Just imagine being Jesus. Imagine being that man who his destiny was designed to save people's lives. Can you imagine just being that man that God created you just to what? Save people's lives. People that you don't know, people that you never encountered to. You were designed to free people from their mental, emotional, and physical bondage. Mm, my God. Just imagine being Jesus, riding in in Jerusalem on a donkey. Not like you ain't got no gray horse. You ain't got no white stallion. No, God just gave you a donkey. And he said, go ride down into Jerusalem on this day because I need to prepare you for your crucifixion that is coming. And you are responsible to free the people who are saying, Hosanna. They're screaming at you, save us now. 
Save us. They knew you were the Messiah. Blessed are you in the Lord, the son of David. Hosanna. Just imagine what Jesus was feeling. Can you imagine just the heavy and the profound destiny that he had on his shoulders, that he had on his mind, that he had to carry as he rode in to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday? Beloved, again, I want you to imagine being chosen by God to fulfill this prophecy. Mm, can you imagine being the one to fulfill the prophecy, being the one to know that the end game is coming. Some of us don't know when our end game is. We don't know, you know, when our final day will be on this earth. We don't know when our last breath is, but Jesus knew. He knew why he, when he was born, he knew how his mother Mary told him, you know, his name was Jesus, you know, how she was a virgin Mary. He knew in preparation all his life that his destiny was coming to an end. He probably didn't know exactly when, but he knew he was prepared for that. And it wasn't just about him. It was about everyone else that he was connected to. It was about everyone else that he was around it. Imagine knowing that you are this one man designed to carry all of this and to fulfill this prophecy. Can you imagine? My beloved, could you want to do that today? Mm, my God, could you be the one to be like Jesus? to ride on a donkey in Jerusalem and have the people shout to you, Hosanna. It, it just blows my mind to think how Jesus began to prepare his destiny. Mm. He got, he knew that this was coming to an end. He could have ran. Amen. He could have said, you know what, Jesus, I, I, I mean, God, I was, I was with you, you know, in the wilderness. I was with you when I was out there delivering people, but this right here, no, I'm not about this life. He could have said, no, I'm not doing it. But he did not. He still had faith in God. He still trusted his father to say, if this is what you've called me to do, and this is what I'm destined to do, I'm going to do those things. Can you imagine having that heavy destiny? I'm telling you, it just blows my mind. But it also makes me see here in the text, a man who was not fearful nor anxious, but calm. Mm. I'm going to say that again, just for some of you who might have went over your head. In the text here, you see Jesus. He is a man that who, who's not fearful. He's not anxious, but calm. Knowing what he's getting ready to do, knowing the preparation that is leading him into the last week of his life and his destiny, he is not fearful. He is not anxious, but he is calm. Mm. Though this marked the beginning of Holy Week, Jesus took it one day at a time. I believe he didn't rush it. He didn't try to say, hurry up. Like y'all disciples go get what y'all told y'all to get. I need y'all to hurry. Like make this quick, you know, and act it all frantic. He just told him, you heard the prophecy. This is what I need you to go do. And this is what you need to say if you have any problems. And they came on back and then he was just as smooth and just riding in. Even the disciples didn't really understand or acknowledge what was really going on. Again, they were followers of Christ. So they followed whatever Jesus said for them to do. And they didn't understand the heaviness of, or the revelation that was going on. But Jesus knew, but he still, I believe he just took it one day at a time. Beloved, that's just like us. Even now, we are going through a pandemic. We are going through things that we don't understand. And we could be fearful and be anxious but for what? We, we can't control tomorrow. We can't control what the government's going to do. We can't control how it's going to end. So, beloved, as Christians and as followers of Christ, we need to act Christ-like to take on what Jesus did, even in his final moments, to be not fearful, to not be anxious, but be calm and take it what? One day at a time. That's all we need to do. Take it one day at a time to not have fear and to not be anxious. For this day was approaching if this day is approaching us on Sunday, as I said, Palm Sunday is coming up this Sunday. And he gave out instructions to his disciple and prepared himself to go into the city. Now, if you look at the text and read about Jesus' journeys, I'm not talking about in Matthew, but if you want to go back or you want to take your time, which we all have, you know, and really study the text and really see and what Jesus' journey went through, how you can see how everything he did not believe that he was the chosen one. People didn't believe. They they were just like, you know, this this man's nice. Yeah, he healed some people. Yeah, he said some things. People didn't really believe. You know, they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. You know, Jesus had haters. Amen. Just like you and I, we got haters. Amen. Jesus had haters too. And you probably would think like, how could a man who could show, you know, someone who was in affliction with, you know, the woman of the 12 issue had 12 years of the blood 
just kept flowing and she touched the hem of his garment and she was made healed or he had blind Bartimaeus at the river and he touched his eyes and he was able to see a man who did such wonders in front of their eyes still say mm -mm. like I don't know who you are like that was nice or that was a nice trick you know it, it baffles my mind that he still had people who didn't believe him and even Jesus knowing he had haters and knowing that people did not believe that he was Messiah that he didn't let that hinder him he didn't let that hinder him from fulfilling his destiny beloved this morning I want to ask the question what are you allowing to hinder your destiny because you are worried about what people are saying about you you are worried about what people have done to you that that's not Christ like you can't worry about what's going on you have to be like Jesus don't worry what they said about you don't worry about what they do to you what you need to worry about is what God has called you to do you have to be able to believe within your soul within your mind to know hey God called me to do this thing God has preordained and destined me to have this gift and to have this anointing so regardless of what people say about me or regardless if they believe or they don't believe I have to be able to fulfill that because I honor God more than I honor man amen that's what we really have to believe on this morning don't always just look to man for what you need or look to man for the gratification it might not come the way that you think it should come amen but you have to trust and know in your spirit in your in your soul that hey I'm doing this for God I'm doing this because God has destined me to do this. This is what Jesus went through as he prepared to go to Jerusalem and as he went in on the donkey. He did not know if these folks would cheer him on on the road to Jerusalem or they might boo him. Tweet, tweet, okay? He did not know. They might be like, you know, yes, you know, here come the Messiah. And then he might have had half a crowd say, boo, you know, you think you who you are. I'm over here struggling. I need food. I'm not thinking about you, sir. You know, I'm going over here. He did not know what was going to come. All he knew was to be obedient to what God had told him to do and was to do it. Amen? Jesus kept his ear to God and did what God told him to do. My God, beloved, this is what we must do to keep our ear to God in spite of the pandemic, in spite of what is going on right now in our nation. We cannot continue to keep our eyes on the news. We can't continue to keep our eyes on the government or the man to see what they're going to do. No, 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 beloved. We have to keep our ear to God the same way that Christ kept his ear to God and just do what God has us to do. And that might just mean sit still. God might say, hey, I need you to sit still, my child, my daughter, my, my son, sit still and watch me work for you. I need you to really go and back and read over this passage and really dig deeper into me. Or I need you to go take some time and meditate on me. Or I need you to put the kids in another room and I need you to take the time to sit here and pray with me and really focus on me. Whatever God is telling you to do right now in this moment and this season, beloved, is what you need to do. Put your ear to God. We cannot allow what folks have said about you. You can't allow it. Come on. I myself am the same way. I can't allow what folks have said about me or let someone or things distract me from what God has destined for me to do. Beloved, if this is not the time, I don't know when the time is to really get a hold of God and to really be on fire for God. You, you can't get distracted. You can't allow what happened in the past to hinder you. You can't allow what people are saying about you now to hinder you. No, today is a new day. Amen. You woke up this morning, beloved. God did not find it robbery to give you breath into your lungs. Some people did not make it on this morning. Some people did not make it in this year, beloved, but God, you made it. Amen. So you have to really believe in your spirit to know that I might have to change some things around in my life to be able to keep my ear towards the Lord, amen, to keep my mind stayed and focused on God. Beloved, that's what I believe Jesus did in this moment. How else would this man be able to get on a donkey and to make it through traveling through on a, a rocky road in Jerusalem in front of people he did not know and not even knowing if they were going to say praise you or they were going to say boo you. He had no idea, but it did not matter to him. All that mattered was that I got to keep my focus on God. I have to keep my mind stayed on God because if I allow myself as human, because Jesus came in human form to be anxious or to be fearful, which it happens, we're not perfect. 
We all go through. Beloved, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying you have to be perfect. But what I'm challenging you is just to be better, to be acknowledgeable, be mindful when that fear comes in how to pray. Be mindful when you're anxious and you you don't know how or what to do. Reach out to one another. Reach out to your sister. Reach out to your brother and say, hey, today's not a good day or I'm not having a good moment. Can you pray with me or talk with me or maybe we can FaceTime or we can go online and play a game. Do something to help each other to be able to stay connected to God. Stay unified amongst Christ. Amen. What are you saying, Elder? I'm glad you as you, beloved, are chosen by God to do something for him that only you can do. Jesus was one man, beloved. He was just only one man. He was one man that was chosen by God before his birth to do this for coming up Holy Week, to go through to the laying on the hands, to preaching to the multitude, to do the miracles and the wonders, but also he was prepared and destined for the crucifixion. Beloved, you and I are made and predestined by God to do something miraculous by God that only you can do. Can no one else do it for you? We all can praise God together. We all can pray together and give God thanks, but there's also specific gifts within each one of us that only we can do, that no one else can duplicate, can no one else do, amen? It's only just for you and I. You, beloved, we're chosen by God to do that. I don't care what the world is saying, nor how things look right now. You, beloved, still are chosen to do the things of God. I don't care what's going on. It does not matter, you know, what's going out in the world. We can't control it anyway. We have no control over it. So you know whose control you have? Yours. You have control over you as an individual. You have control over your household, how your children are going to act, how your children, who your children are going to serve, how y'all can come together and have Bible study, how y'all can come together and have prayer. Those are the things that you have control over, beloved. Those are the things that I'm challenging you on this morning to look at Jesus' story about Palm Sunday. Look how he knew. He didn't have control over what the end was going to be. He didn't have control over the disciples. At times, anyway, all he knew was that I got to keep my ear towards God and I got to follow what God has for me for me to do because only I can do what God destined for me to do. Yes, we are not Jesus the Messiah. However, we are Christians, so we need to act Christ-like. If we say we believe in God, if we say we're going to follow God, then that means we have to start acting like that, meaning to embrace the holy boldness to do what God wants us to do. This is not the time to be scared anymore, beloved. This is not the time to say, I'll do that later, or I'll get to it eventually, or, okay, you know, God called me. I know he called me to do this, but, uh, you know, I'm going to go over here real quick and be a little silent. No, this is not the time to have the excuses anymore. It's not the time because the distractions are gone. There's no more, I got to go over here and see sister so-and-so, and and then I got to go check on brother so-and-so, or I have these responsibilities, or the kids got football and soccer, or I got to go over here and do this ministry. There's There's no more time for the distractions or the excuses. The time is now, beloved. The time is now for you to really get into God's word and figure out, hey, what does God have for me to do? What do I need to do? What things that I keep saying, yep, I'm going to start this ministry and keep saying you didn't going to do it, or I'm going to write this book and then you keep putting it off. You know, what things have you been promising God or you keep saying, God, if you get me out of this, y'all know that one, amen? Sweet, sweet, we all been in there and those bonds, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'm going to serve you or I promise I'm going to do that. What happened to those promises? Are you actually doing that? God saved you, I'm sure, and delivered you out of some mess that you thought you shouldn't have put yourself in in the first place, or you didn't know how you ended up in it. God got you out anyway, and you still sitting there playing with God. Mm, My God, come on, Jesus. You have to really sit there, beloved, and dig deep to see, hey, how am I serving God during this pandemic? What am I doing as a relationship with Christ? You don't have to put it out there to everyone. You don't got to tell everyone. It's only between you and God. For God knows your heart more than you know it yourself. That's only between you and him. Being vulnerable and being holy bonus. That means being bold with God and being open to God in the midst of this chaos. We are living in a time where for, I don't know about you, beloved, but for me, this will be the first time in history that I can't go to a building because church is wherever I go, amen? But I can't go to the building of church to fellowship and reverence Palm Sunday. Mm. 
my God, this will be the first time in history for me. I'm 34 years old and I won't be able to go to the building of church and fellowship with my fellow colleagues and my family and Reverence Palm Sunday and then Holy Week is next week and I won't be able to do, there's no going to be no seven last words and no Good Friday, you know, like we normally do. So to me, it's time for me to take a step back and sit back and say, my God, what are you trying to say? What are you saying to me, God? What are you saying to as a nation? You know, however, we got to understand that it's not just about the building. It's not about the building because what church is in us, we can see that wholeheartedly churches all over the world are streaming live churches all over the world are being created with zoom they're doing different things and we are still be able to feel the presence i don't know about you but i still feel god in my house in my living room in my kitchen in my car wherever i'm at i still feel the presence of god that no that tells me that god is everywhere i go it's not about the building but it's it, it's not about the traditions either that we have been accustomed to we are so used to you know we get up on sundays we put on our sunday best we go to church. Jesus said, mm -mm, it ain't about that this season. It ain't about that this year. He cut those things out. Beloved, we have to go deeper into the scripture, into the text. We have to see the message that Jesus was just one man, but chosen by God. Amen. Go deeper into the meaning of Palm Sunday. Go deeper into the message of what God was trying to say to us. And then sit there and try to imagine and feel, how did Jesus feel? How could he have felt going through these motions and having these people scream Hosanna at him saying, save us, save us. This man is on a donkey and these people are screaming, save us. And he still could have been fearful and he could have been anxious. However, Jesus was just calm and he kept his ear to God. Jesus was one man to ride through Jerusalem in front of people who believed and did not believe. I don't believe everyone in the crowd was hyped. Everybody wasn't excited to see Jesus. Some people probably were still hating or not even acknowledging him, but it was all right because it seemed as if what we read into the text, the people who were hyped and who were happy about Jesus outweighed the people who were not hyped about him. That's how God covered him. And that's how God can cover us. The people that we think are not going to be on our side or who are not going to support us doesn't mean or that we can't do what God has destined us or preordained us to do. You do what God tells you to do and watch how he gives you the, the comfort or he'll surround the people around you that need to be your amen corner or surround the people that believe in you or surround the people that are going to love you. And those who are hating and those who are judging you, I promise you, beloved, I'm a firm believer. He will cast them aside. That means the distance between y'all will start to become relevant. And you're sitting there wondering, you know, we used to be homegirls and we used to be homeboys and we used to always hang and you know, we was partying. You was a turn up girl. What happened to you? God happened to me. Amen. And what you believe and what you serve is not what I believe and I serve anymore. Beloved, that's what I'm believing that God is going to do for us the same way God did for Jesus. He was not knowing how they would react, but he had faith in God to move forward. Beloved, now is the time to have faith and increase your faith. I know we all say we have faith. You know, I trust in God and I believe in God. But beloved, I feel like he's challenging us in this season. Imagine we can't go nowhere. We can't go even eat at a restaurant. I went to go wash clothes the other day. They talking about 10 people only to come in. You got to put your clothes in, hit the start button and go wait in your car until it's done. You got to time your, your clock, come back in. I mean, these are, these are different times. These are times that you're not used to. You can't fold your clothes up there. You got to hurry up and go home. You know, all this is new to us, beloved. So now is the time to increase our faith and belief in God because we don't know how long this will last. We don't know. They say, give it another month. And then we don't know if they'll come out and say, hey, give it another month. We, we, we just don't know. All I know, beloved, is that I believe in God and I believe that he is in control. So I have to increase my faith and belief in God. And this is the time to dig deeper into who I am in relationship with God, beloved. Truly try to feel what Jesus had to be feeling as he was moving through the crowd. Imagine being one man sitting on a donkey, having to go down the path in Jerusalem around people who you really don't know personally, some who are for you, some who are against you. Just imagine how he had to feel hearing them yell Hosanna. Hosanna, which means save us, son of David, the Messiah, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, my God. He had to ride through the city as people were yelling at him, save us. 
This is the Messiah. Save us. Imagine being in the midst of the moment that God had created for you. Jesus is in this moment. Hearing the people yell to you as a reminder of who you are and that you are responsible for saving them. Mm, my God, can you imagine riding in as they're screaming, Hosanna, save us, and you are reminded. It's not even about you as the man now. You can't be sitting there smiling and being boastful like, yes, you know, they praising me. But there's a meaning to the message behind what they're saying to you. They're saying that you are the son of David. They're saying that you are the Messiah. And now they're saying, save us. They're telling you, I know that you are the one that's going to come to save us. Imagine how Jesus had to feel like, jeez, you know, they even know, oh my God. You know, I know I've been wrestling in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights about what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do it. But now I have to hear the people. I'm hearing the cries that God has heard for many, many years that this is coming to reality. It's me. Jesus saying, yeah, you know, this is me. Ooh, you are just being one man responsible for millions of lives. Woo. I don't know about you, but that is a lot. Amen, beloved. That's, that's a lot to think about. That's a lot to carry. That's a lot to endure. Can you imagine being in a moment where for you are being praised at one point and then prepare for death at the same time? Mm, my God. The people are praising you, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're saying you are the son of David, you are the Messiah, but at the same time, Jesus is also being prepared for his time of death because this marks the last week of his life on earth. My God, can you imagine what could be going through Jesus' head? Can you imagine what that feeling feels like to be like that? Beloved, we are living in a time wherefore we need to get in a long time with God. This is the time as we are shut in, as we can't go nowhere, to get into that alone time with God. The same way that Jesus went out in the wilderness. I'm not saying you got to go to the wilderness, beloved. Amen. I'm not saying that. Your, your living room is fine. Your bedroom is fine. What I'm saying is it's time to get into a long time with God. We have to put our ear to God and trust that God will protect us the same way that he did with Jesus way back then in this pandemic. Mm, my God, as we have to venture out sometimes to the store or as we still have to go maybe go get gas or as we some of us are, are healthcare workers and we still have to go to work and, you know, we seeing people coming each and every day. Some people passing away, some people have the virus. As we're going through all this, we still have to be able to trust in God. And the only way to increase that trust and increase that faith in God is that we have to get in a long time with God. We got to put our ear to God and say, be like Jesus. Hey, I don't know about this. You know what, God? You know, I'm not sure, <laughs> amen, what this looks like, but I trust in you. I have faith in you. I believe in you. Using Jesus, God used his son as the sacrifice to forgive us of our sins that he didn't commit. Remember that, beloved. We, he, Jesus didn't commit any sins. It was us. Us as the people of God, us as the people who some who believed in him and some who did not believe him. So God said, you know what? I'm going to send my son down there to be the sacrifice for all of us because of all the sins that we created. And Jesus still went through with it. This weekend, beloved, as I'm coming to a close, as we approach Holy Week, which is Palm Sunday, I challenge you to take the time to reflect on what Jesus means to you. Mm, my God, I want you to reflect to see what does Jesus really mean to me? Who is this man? What does this man mean in my life? What does God mean to me? What does faith look like to me? What is relationship? And if you already have a relationship, beloved, I'm challenging you to go a little deeper as well. What would it look like for me to go deeper into Christ? to really get into some more worship or to get into some more prayer times, to be diligent and putting it into my schedule to really focus on God. What would that look like, beloved? As we are approaching Holy Week, as it is coming up on Sunday, I want you to really think about what did Jesus feel like? Mm. What was he going through? What could have been went in his mind? How many different case scenarios could have happened that did not happen? How many times could he said no? How many times could he would have fled or ran away? 
How many times could he went anywhere else? But he did not do those things, beloved. That's what's challenging us today to follow Christ. We as Christians, we as believers have to really seek after God to say, hey, if Jesus didn't flee, if Jesus gave up his life for me, what am I giving up for him? Mm, my God, what am I giving up for him? Excuse me, what am I doing for Christ? What are the things that God has designed in me that I need to be doing for him? My God, we really have to get into our word, beloved. We really have to get into that deeperness and that relationship with Christ. Put your ear to God. Not about what other people are saying. Forget about the news for a minute. Forget about the government for a minute. Forget about the pandemic. Just put your mind and your focus on God and see what God has just for you. Mm. And if you can't do those things, then just look at the story. Matthew chapter 21. Imagine what Jesus was going through as he was just one man to carry out a significant prophecy for the nation, for you and for I. Not knowing us from a can of paint. But he still believed in what God said he had to do. And he carried out that prophecy. They rode down Jerusalem on that little rocky road on his little donkey. And them people screamed out to him, Hosanna. They said, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest of heavens. They screamed, save us now. For you are the Messiah, and you've come to save us. Amen? Amen. Beloved, I pray that I touched you on this morning. Um, and if you would like, again, it's Matthew chapter 21. I challenge you or I encourage you to go back to read the scripture and the text. Maybe go back a little bit further and read some more about Jesus' journey. And then really take this weekend to get prepared of reverence. I'm sure churches will be streaming this Sunday as I watch all different church services everywhere. Um, they'll be streaming their services and they'll be, you know, talking about Palm Sunday and they'll be going into that reverence. So now is the time to get our spirit. Now is the time to get ourselves prepared for that reverence. Really acknowledge God and really say, wow, you know, I didn't think about it like that. Jesus did go through a lot. You know, this he was only one man and he still went through a lot. Going down the road, you know, as he's going down, you know, preparing for his last week. In the midst of the celebration was still the preparedness for his death. And Jesus still was faithful. He didn't give up. He didn't throw in the towel. He still held on and did what, what God asked him to do. And as the reason I know this because you and I are still here today. Beloved, we would not be here if it were not for what Jesus did way back on Calvary. If it was not for what Jesus was obedient to do, you and I would not be here, beloved. Those are the things that we need to be focusing on in these moments, in these times. Those are the things that we can unify amongst each other. And those are the things that we can come together and encourage one another to say, Jesus was there for us and he went through it and he died for us, that we might have life and not just life, but everlasting life, eternal life. So you beloved, you have to hang on in there. I know it doesn't look good. I know it some days don't feel good. Some moments don't feel good, but I promise you, you have to hang on to God's unchanging hand. Increase your faith and belief in him. And if you can't do it on your own, reach out to someone. Reach out to myself. Reach out to your brother or your sister on your left or your right. Reach out to someone to be able to hold you up when you cannot hold yourself up. Amen? Because we are supposed to be unified together in Christ. Now is the time to come together. Not to victimize, not to judge each other, not to talk about each other, but to come together and lean on each other. Amen, beloved? At this time, I'll open up for any prayer requests. If there's anything that you'd like me to pray for at this time, you may put it in the comments or anything that you need prayer for this morning. This is the time to do that as well. If there's anything, anyone has any prayer requests or anything they'd like to pray for, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, amen. Yes, the time. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is Alpha and Omega. Amen. We have to worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If there's no prayer request, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up 
end in a word of prayer. Again, I pray that this word touched you. I pray that you can remember what Jesus did and really reflect on how he was just one man, but he was a faithful man. And as he was also the son of God, that God chose him to do such a great work for all of us in the land. And the same way Jesus chose him, God, I'm sorry, the same way God chose Jesus is the same way that God chose us. Amen. It's the same way that God is choosing us each and every day to serve him, to do wonderful, miraculous things in Christ. And to be able to minister to just not ourselves, but minister to one another. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we give you thanks and we give you praise. I thank you, Father, for the word that came forward. I thank you, Father, as we are getting prepared for Holy Week that is coming up. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to touch us on the inside and on the out, Father. Some of us, Father, are anxious. Some of us have fear. Some of us have doubt. Some of us are not understanding what's going on. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you give us that peace that passes all understanding. Give us the comfort on the inside to be able to really lean on you for your understanding, but not for our own. Help us to trust in you and everything that we do. Help us to increase our relationship with you. Help us to go dig deeper into what you have for us, Father. Help us to see us as the men and women of God that you've called us to be. And when, when we can't do it ourselves, Father, I pray that you put someone in our spirit, you place someone in our life to reach out to us, that we are able to reach out to, to pray with us, to be able to love on us, Father. I'm praying that you continue to unify us together as a whole. Help us to come together and be able to stand on your word. I continue to pray for the, the hospitals, the nursing homes, the health care providers, the nurses, the doctors, the CNAs, the staff workers, Father, the aides, everyone. I continue to pray on them, Father. Continue to increase them, Father. Continue to give restoration to them. Continue to help them be able to do the work of the Lord. And the chaplains who are still in the hospital will have to pray over the sick. Father, I pray that you continue to have your angels camped around them and bless them, Father, even as they continue to have faithfulness in you, as they continue to spread the word. I pray, Father, for the churches who are continuing to stream live, who are diligently every day getting up, Father, to spread your word and praying with the people. I pray that you give them restoration, Father. Continue to lift their spirits up. Continue supporting on them, Father, and loving on them. I pray for our nation as a whole, Father. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for a shift in the atmosphere, Father, that you continue to reign on us, Father. We know we cannot predict tomorrow. We don't know what the future holds, Father, but we know we serve a God that is able. We know we serve a God that is mightyful. We, serve, we know we serve a God that is victorious. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus, continue to work for your people. Continue to send healing to the land and for our nation, Father. Continue to let your angels be on the doorpost, Father. Continue to work things out in us, Father. Continue to be with the, not just us, but with our families, with our friends, with our neighbors, Father. Continue to be with our nation and our government leaders. Give them the wisdom that they need, Father, that in this time of pandemic to be able to do the right thing, not just by themselves, but for the people of the land. I thank you, Father, in advance for the victory that shall be won. I thank you for this Friday, Father, for seeing another day and making it to the end of the week. I thank you for us coming together to unify together on one accord in the fellowship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We reverence you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Again, I thank you for joining me. I thank you for tuning in. You have definitely been a blessing. I thank you for your comments and for your love, for your sharing. I pray that you continue to, you know, reverence Jesus in this moment, reverence Jesus in this weekend. Continue to reverence on him and love on him and allow him to love on you. Amen. I pray that you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will be back on Monday at 7 a.m. and we will be talking about Holy Week. If you missed this video or you know someone who can really appreciate hearing this word, please share this. I post this to my page. It's also, if they don't have Facebook, it's on my YouTube channel as well, which is under the same name, Elder Paula Davidson. Let us get the word out there. Let us spread to one another and let us unify together for the glory of God's kingdom. 
God bless you, my sisters, my brothers, my friends, my family. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And may you have a wonderful and amazing day. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen.